Good morning. Here are my disclosures. My name is Dr. Holly Middlecoff, and I'm pleased to share with you this morning the results of our studies into the differential expression of immune cell instigators of COVID-19 infection in tobacco cigarette smokers and electronic cigarette vapors. The SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus responsible for the COVID-19 infection, has infected over 100 million people worldwide, resulting in over 2 million deaths in the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The coronavirus, shown here, is covered in these spike proteins. It gains entry into the host cell when the spike proteins bind to the ACE2 receptor on the host cell. But before the spike protein can latch onto the receptor, it has to be cleaved or modified. The spike protein can be cleaved or modified by host proteases. Uh, one is called the TMPRSS2 protease, and the other is furin. Once cleaved or primed, the spike proteins bind to the ACE2 host receptor, and the virus is internalized by endocytosis. But beyond this, very little is known about the mechanisms of virulence of the SARS-CoV-2 virus and the factors increasing vulnerability to severe infection. The role of smoking in COVID-19 infection is controversial. On the one hand, unlike virtually any other respiratory infection, such as influenza, for example, the proportion of smokers hospitalized with COVID-19 is significantly less than the proportion of smokers in the community. And this has been reported in China, in Italy, in New York City, and other areas severely affected by the COVID-19 infection. This has led to the hypothesis that smoking or something in tobacco cigarette smoke is somehow protective. That is, it has been hypothesized that COVID-19 is a disease of the cholinergic or nicotinic anti-inflammatory pathway. And I'd be very happy to expand upon that in the Q&A section if, if anybody has questions. But on the other hand, smoking has been identified as a risk factor for more severe COVID-19 disease and increased mortality in in patients already hospitalized with COVID-19 infection. And this is a meta-analysis um, led by Dr. Glantz and his group that was published in Nicotine and Tobacco Research, the journal associated with the society, that reported um, the results of uh, meta-analysis in over uh, 19 studies, where they found a twofold increase in more severe COVID-19 infection or uh, chances of mortality um, in patients already hospitalized with COVID-19 who were smokers compared to those who were non-smokers. So just to review the key proteins in COVID-19 infection, there's a spike protein, that, which is part of the, the, uh, the virus, and then there are the host proteins. There's the probably the most well-known, the ACE2 protein, um, which is the receptor for the spike protein. And that has to undergo priming or modification by host proteases. And the host proteases uh, that have been identified have been the TMPRSS2 in furin, which then cleaves the spike, spike protein and increase its affinity for binding to the ACE2 protein uh, receptor very 10 to 20 fold. And then there's something called ADAM17, which is another host protease, which is responsible, responsible for shedding of ACE2, but it also causes dysregulation of interleukin-6. And as we all know, increased interleukin-6 levels have been associated with increased mortality from the COVID-19 infection. Well, let's zero in a little bit more on what we know about the ACE2 receptor, uh, the, the receptor for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. First of all, it's ubiquitous. 
it's found in virtually every organ and tissue. Uh, it's found in lung, uh, the gut, kidney, the heart, adipose tissue, endothelial cells in their vascular smooth muscle. It's found in brain and other neuronal tissue. And importantly, it's found in immune cells. And this wide range of uh, expression of ACE2 may in part explain uh, the diverse presentation of COVID-19 infection, as well as the presentation of the cytokine uh, release syndrome, which has been responsible for uh, ARDS and so many deaths in COVID-19. Well, importantly, in rodents and diseased human lungs, tobacco cigarette smoke has been associated with increased ACE2 ex ex expression. Uh, so this leads to several questions. Uh, one of the first questions is the increased ACE2 expression in smokers, a nonspecific finding, something that's just found in the um, diseased lungs, that is, uh, for example, the underlying lung disease that typifies tobacco cigarette smokers? Or is it directly attributable to tobacco cigarette smoke exposure itself? And if so, if this is the case, is it the nicotine in the tobacco cigarette smoke? Or uh, one or more of the thousands of other non-nicotine toxicants and constituents in tobacco cigarette smoke? And how about the other key proteins in COVID-19 infection? How are they impacted by smoking how, and by nicotine and also by the non-nicotine constituents? So we reasoned that studies in healthy young people without any lung disease, who, but who smoke tobacco cigarettes, would clarify this issue of whether smoking alone in the absence of inflammatory lung disease increases key instigators of COVID-19 infection. Well, how about vaping? Everybody at this meeting knows that electronic cigarette vaping is increasing. Electronic cigarette emissions contain far, far fewer toxicants compared to tobacco cigarette smoke. And those that are there are present in much lower, several magnitudes of uh, lower um, concentrations. That is except for one, nicotine. Nicotine levels are similar in tobacco and electronic cigarette emissions and in the people who use them. Well, what is known about vaping in COVID-19? And at this point, I can tell you not a lot. I was only able to find one publication actually um, with data, with any data. And that's, this, it's this publication um, from uh, Stanford and uh, UC San Francisco where they found a uh, clear association between smoking uh, I'm sorry, between electronic cigarette use and COVID-19. They uh, did a survey of almost 5,000 adolescents and young adults ages 13 to 24, and they found a striking uh, association between COVID-19 and vaping. Then they did recognize some, uh, some kind of funny things in their, their data, that is tobacco cigarette smoking was not associated with increased risk for COVID-19. And they did acknowledge that an association does not necessarily mean causality. Um, they noted that uh, vaping behavior, uh, especially amongst youths, is a group activity. Um, where the, the electronic cigarette or vape is actually shared amongst them. So maybe it's not the what's in the vaping itself, but it's the behavior um, that the, the uh, young people are not following uh, physical or social distancing, and that may be the association. But nonetheless, this is a striking, um, you know, this is a concerning association that COVID-19 is um, increased in, in uh, young people who vape. So we further reasoned that studies in healthy young people without lung disease who only vape electronic cigarettes 
no dual users, non-smokers, would help clarify whether nicotine or the thousands of other non-nicotine constituents present in tobacco cigarette smoke increase key instigators of COVID-19 infection. And our studies were performed um, in samples collected in 2019, well before the pandemic struck. Um, our study population consisted of healthy male and female volunteers ages 21 to 45 years old, meeting the following eligibility criteria. We studied only chronic tobacco cigarette smokers defined by smoking history of at least a year or chronic electronic cigarette vapors, that is vaping for at least a year. And we eliminated any dual users. You had to use one or the other. We also had a group of non-smokers Former smokers were allowed in to participate if greater than a year had elapsed since quitting smoking. We measured the end tidal uh, carbon monoxide in vapors and non-smokers to confirm that none were surreptitiously smoking tobacco cigarettes. Uh, we studied only non-obese uh, participants uh, without any health problems. They were not taking any prescription medications, although oral contraceptive pills were allowed. And uh, uh, there was no regular illicit drug use. And this was confirmed by both a screening questionnaire and a urine toxicology testing. Um, our study protocol mandated that all participants refrain from using caffeine, tobacco products, and exercise for 12 hours prior to the study. And all reported to the UCLA Clinical Translational Research Center at 8 a.m. fasting for blood draw. The blood was drawn by trained medical assistants and prepared for flow cytometry and uh, plasma cotinine levels. Uh, the uh, peripheral blood mononucleate cells, PBMCs, were isolated and frozen for later analysis uh, for flow cytometry. And we did use multicolor flow cytometry to measure levels of our key proteins. That is the ACE2, TMPRSS2, furin, and Adam 17. So our study population was small, but very the groups were very well matched. They had similar ages. They were a young group, I mean age 24, with similar sex and race distributions and similar BMIs. Importantly, the plasma cotinine level, which is an indicator, indicator of uh, smoking burden, was similar between e-cigarette vapors and tobacco cigarette smokers. And they were pretty light tobacco product users. Uh, their level of education was also the same, all with uh, college or, or graduate school education. So what did we find? Well, the, the first results I'm going to show you are the percentage of the immune cells that had positive staining for each of the, the, the key proteins we were studying in the three groups, the tobacco cigarette smokers, the electronic cigarette, cigarette vapors, and the non-smokers. You can see here that tobacco cigarette smokers had a striking increase in the percentage of cells that expressed ACE2 compared to electronic cigarette vapors and to non-smokers. Similarly, tobacco cigarette smokers had a, again, a very striking increase in the percentage of cells that express TMPRSS2, the protease, compared to electronic cigarette vapors and non-smokers. Furin, the other protease, was not different among the groups. Um, but ADAM17, again, the other protease, um, was markedly and significantly increased in tobacco cigarette smokers compared to electronic cigarette vapors and non-smokers. When quantified another way, that is by looking at uh, the mean fluorescence intensity for each protein in the positive cells, we found similar results. That is, that is, in tobacco cigarette smokers, um, the mean fluorescent intensity for ACE2 was several fold greater compared to that in electronic cigarette vapors and non-smokers. Uh, tobacco cigarette smokers also had greater 
mean fluorescent intensity of the TMPRSS2 uh, in their immune cells compared to vapors and non-smokers. And furin also uh, was uh, expressed in greater intensity in tobacco cigarette smokers compared to non-smokers. And ADAM17, uh, the, the protease associated with IL-6 was also uh, had a much greater, several fold greater uh, mean fluorescent intensity in tobacco cigarette smokers compared to electronic cigarette vapors and non-smokers. In electronic cigarette vapors, the protease furin um, was elevated compared to non-smokers and the TMPRSS tended to be uh, greater in electronic cigarette vapors compared to non-smokers, so that didn't quite reach significance. So in summary, ACE2, TMPRSS2, and ADAM17 are markedly increased in peripheral blood mononuclear cells in tobacco cigarette smokers compared to electronic cigarette vapors and non-smokers. The electronic cigarette vapors have a small increase in the TMPRSS2 and furin proteases compared to non-smokers. Um, and the similar cotinine levels in our smokers and vapors implicates these, the non-nicotine toxicants in tobacco cigarette smoke in inducing the ACE2 and the proteases. So in smokers, the upregulation of ACE2, the receptor for SARS-CoV-2, and the proteases TMPRSS2 and furin, which modify the spike protein, thereby enhancing its affinity uh, for the ACE2 receptor 10 to 20 fold, and the upregulation of ADAM17, which promotes dysregulation of IL-6, a correlate of COVID-19 mortality, provide insight into the mechanisms whereby smoking may increase vulnerability to severe COVID-19, even in healthy young people. So what are the implications of these findings? Well, the finding that key instigators of COVID-19 in immune cells are lower in vapors compared to smokers warrants additional investigation to, to determine if switching to electronic cigarettes from tobacco cigarettes may be a, a form of harm reduction um, in those tobacco cigarette smokers who are unable or unwilling to quit. But the trend towards increased proteases in vapors compared to non-smokers remains concerning. Thank you very much.